are these people? I brought this, Colin, because I have spoken a couple of times about, you know, look into who started Hamas, right? And yes, um, I might be incorrect. So, uh, you know, um, I brought this to kind of, you know, fix some of that. Um, so this is from Robert in, in, in Lakesh, in Lakesh, right. make sure I get that right. Cause I always want to revert back to how I said it before, um, over at Mint press. Um, and he, he pulled this out he's got some video to go with it. So we'll, we'll let him intro this a bit. Shortly after the attack on October 7, you may have heard the argument that the Palestinian party responsible Hamas had been funded by Benjamin Netanyahu to prevent a peace agreement with the Palestinian Authority and that Hamas itself was a creation of Israel, with clips like these doing the rounds. What if I told you that Israel helped create Hamas? If you look at the history, you'll find out that Hamas was encouraged and really started by Israel because they wanted Hamas to counteract Yasser Arafat. But what if I told you that Hamas was not created by Israel, and that this idea is an exaggerated misinterpretation of history. Yet, if this is the case, then where do such claims come from, and is there any truth to them? In order to answer these questions, we have to go back to 1973, when a Palestinian member of the Muslim Brotherhood named Sheikh Ahmed Yassin started the Mujama al Islamiya, an Islamic social organization that would aim to push a conservative interpretation of Sunni Islam inside of the Gaza Strip. At this time, Israel internally occupied Gaza and sought to suppress Palestinian resistance groups in line with the Palestine Liberation Organization, PLO, which was actively fighting Israel from its headquarters in Lebanon. So, when the Mujama, colloquially referred to in Gaza as the Ikhwan or Brotherhood, were seeking to build an Islamic civil society sector, were preaching nonviolence against the occupier, and acting in a hostile manner to Palestinian secular nationalists, socialists, and communists, Israel saw an opportunity. So, any questions so far? Uh-uh. Cool. Shortly after... Um... Well, let's continue then. According to reports from the Washington Post at the time, Israeli occupation forces showed leniency toward Mujama activists. Former Israeli Brigadier General Yitzhak Segev claimed that the Israeli government allocated a budget of hundreds of thousands of dollars to support some of the group's project. However, most of Mujama's funding reportedly came from the Arab Gulf states and the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood in 1979. Israel formally recognized the Mujama as an official organization, allowing it to operate freely without interference from Israeli authorities. Right? Okay. So, the evidence has frequently been cited as the basis for claims that Hakrat al Muqwama al Islamiyah, or Hamas, was a creation of Israel. Also, Clap for me for getting that one right. Um, a closer examination suggests that the conclusion likely arises from a misinterpretation of historical events. The notion that Israel established, controlled, or still influences Hamas today appears to overlook the complex realities surrounding the group's formation and development. In reality, while the Mujama initially operated under the influence of Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood, aiming to establish a Palestinian branch to Islamicize society and provide essential services, the group encountered significant challenges. These obstacles eventually led to a shift in its strategy, pushing it away from the original goals that had been created to pursue. Over time, this evolution will lead to the emergence of more militant posture, marking a departure from its earlier focus on social media and religious conservatism. This transformation, driven by both internal and external pressures set the stage for the group's eventual transition into Hamas. So, any questions before we move on? I, well, I might save it to, I'll, I'll, no, I can ask now. I'm just, I'm just curious, how did Robert figure this out? I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, or what made him think to do this 
research research yeah i mean um because i will admit even for me <clears throat> like saying you know like israel created Ham like there was something even in that that, that didn't seem right to me like sure it just felt like there was a lot even to me and i, I never said it because i don't think i can necessarily point pinpoint to it but it just like it it just seemed like there was a lot more to the issue than what you know what it, I, I think it just seemed too simplistic to me that bb yeah actually financed Hamas in an attempt, you know, to prevent essentially like the argument was PLO and the yeah. Right. Like any resistance groups from actually like being radicalized, you know, and now it's basically become a Frankenstein of BB's creation, so to speak. But right. Um <clears throat> I just felt even in saying that it was just kind of like there seems to be a lot more, as there usually is. To the issue then what is being presented even in this you know people are not necessarily saying that bb essentially kind of created um, yeah well and it's uh, it's they do state that they did get some funding from them and they let them like but it's it's a little bit misconstrued as to how that actually happened and what right. effect that had right but you know like he was the only financier like right which was not the in case. case right yeah tactics the mujama succeeded at building schools mosques libraries and helped found the islamic university of gaza also building religious institutions and operating medical clinics and orphanages and providing food and aid to those in need in doing so, it gained a base of supporters. However, another organization also began forming in the late 1970s, declaring itself Palestinian Islamic Jihad, Pij, in 1981, started by Dr. Fatih Shakaki, who... Now, notice how they actually gained power, by the way. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish some people would take into consideration how they did that when trying to get power here. What did they do? Formed schools, universities... Right. Like, you know. That, to me, makes more sense. <laughs> yeah. Right. That makes more yep. sense in terms of what we've been talking about. It's like, mm -hmm. how are you going to liberate people? You educate them. You feed them. You, like, yep. you make them feel human. Yeah. Right? Which is something that we know that Israel, not, well, they're against it because they don't want, essentially, the next generation to uprise and essentially like overtake them in terms of the land grab that they've been trying to get on within the region forever. So, so in this case, that makes more sense because yeah. they're developing infrastructure that Israel has wanted to do and they're so essentially it's just they're in the way like infrastructure wise in education and like yep. you can't have that if you're trying to overtake them so this is where the u.s comes in to you know with the manpower that we have to essentially level the place so that right. makes more this makes more sense to me than just yeah. BB financing Hamas. So, was yeah. influenced by the Muslim Brotherhood too, but also drew inspiration from Brotherhood too, who Palestinian Islamic Jihad, Pidge, in 1981, started by Dr. Fatih Shakaki, who was influenced by the Muslim Brotherhood too, but also drew inspiration from the Islamic revolutionaries in Iran that overthrew the Shah and preached armed resistance. Prior to the Israeli invasion of Lebanon in 1982, mass protests also broke out in Gaza and the West Bank, as the occupying forces began to become more extreme in their methods of violence in the occupied territories. 
Following the defeat of the PLO in 1982 in Lebanon, after Israel killed around 20,000 Palestinians and Lebanese, later overseeing massacres of civilians in refugee camps like Sabra and Shatila, at a time when the PLO fighters had fled to North Africa, many PLO-aligned members switched to support Pidge. While the Mujama argued its belief that uniting the Muslims and creating a perfect Islamic society was an essential precursor to overthrowing the occupiers, Palestinian Islamic Jihad was preaching armed resistance, sometimes causing street clashes between the two Islamic groups. In the mid-1980s, under the supervision of Sheikh Ahmed Yassin, the Mujama began to set up a security apparatus called Al Majid leading to the arrest of Yassin and scores of others involved who were smuggling weapons into the Gaza Strip at the time. So, yeah. That's, that's where we stand. Mm -hmm. um, let's continue a little bit. So, in 1987, in reaction to Israel's illegal occupation, the first intifada erupted across the West Bank and Gaza Strip. This mass uprising, initially characterized by widespread nonviolent protests, escalated tensions between Palestinians and Israeli forces. Notably, an armed clash between Pidge fighters and Israeli forces in Gaza's Shuhaya neighborhood preceded the broader uprising, helping to grow Pidge's following as the group continued to advocate armed resistance. Later but that same that, year's. But yes. notice that mm -hmm. uprisings were nonviolent. At least initially, yeah. So, so, and they probably weren't listened to, and we know the language of the unheard. So, right. later that same year, a significant shift occurred within the Mujama. Sheikh uh, um, Ahmad Yassin, who had previously led the group's religious and social initiatives, along with others, concluded that the time had come to take up arms. As a result, the Mujama transformed, and Hamas. Harakat al Muqwama al Islamiyah, or the Islamic Resistance Movement, was officially born. The group's leadership embraced armed resistance, marking the beginning of Hamas as a militant and political force in the Palestinian struggle against Israeli occupation. The emergence of Hamas in the late 1980s must be understood within a broader historical and political context of widespread disillusionment and shifting ideologies in the Middle East. The group along with other Islamic resistance movements, rose during a period of profound despair and frustration among Palestinians, similar to the way various Palestinian Marxist movements, like the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, had gained prominence after the downfall of Egypt's President Gamal Abul Nasir and the collapse of his vision of socialist Arab nationalism. In the wake of Egypt's crushing defeat in the June 1967 Six-Day War, during which Israel launched a surprise attack, Nasir's once dominant ideology began to lose credibility across the Arab world. This ideological vacuum spurred the growth of alternative revolutionary movements. One such outcome was that George Habash, who had led the Arab nationalist movement, formed the Marxist PFLP, which sought to pursue Palestinian liberation through leftist ideals. Similarly, Hamas emerged from the remnants of the Mujama at a time when Islamist movements began to resonate more strongly with many Palestinians, offering both religious and armed resistance as an alternative path to achieving independence. An ideological shift was underway within Palestine after the defeat of 1982 when Israel's military operations in Lebanon devastated Palestinian resistance forces. In this environment of rising despair and heightened Israeli repression, a social group that emerged as the Palestinian offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood seized the opportunity to establish itself as the leading force in new wave of Islamic resistance movements. This occurred as Israel's brutal brutality was intensifying and the secular leadership of the Palestinian Liberation Organization was seen as weakened. The suggestion that Israel created Hamas by exploiting the Mujama's activities in the 1970s and 80s ignores the broader context of Palestinian resistance. This argument diminishes the group's significance in the national liberation struggle and oversimplifies its emergence as a major force against Israeli occupation. While Hamas's role as a political entity has been contested within Palestinian society, especially in Gaza, 
Its armed wing enjoys widespread support for its role in resisting Israeli occupation. This support reflects the broader Palestinian desire for autonomy and the right to resist occupation, even amid internal political differences. That, I so, would argue, it's the liberation yeah. that they want. Yeah. That and regardless be. of who's running the country, they still want the right to resist. Right. The occupation they are under. Right. So, you know, um, despite Israeli efforts to build localized Palestinian administrative bodies, Part of a broader strategy to ease the administrative burden on the occupation and undermine the influence of the PLO, their stance shifted dramatically once weapons entered the equation. Initially, groups like the Mujama were encouraged to assist in these efforts, but the moment the group began arming itself, the Israeli authorities recognized the threat and responded accordingly. Yep. This shift illustrates how Israel's support was conditional, aimed at weakening the PLO, without anticipating the potential for armed resistance from them. Right. So, you know, it's the minute they started to fight back, they were like, we ain't fucking helping you no more. So, but Israel's miscalculation of the effects of the 1982 war in Lebanon, coupled with the belief that defeating the PLO would lead to the collapse of armed resistance, underpinned their failure to anticipate the rise of groups like Hezbollah and Hamas, this belief was articulated by then Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who stated in 1982, if you take away the Soviet Union and its chief proxy, the PLO, international terrorism would collapse. Where have we fucking heard that before? You know, he said the same thing, right? right. Like we just get rid of Hamas and suddenly terrorism's not here. Right. Okay. However, the Israeli invasion of Lebanon did not lead to the disintegration of resistance, but instead created space for groups like Hezbollah in Lebanon and Hamas in Palestine to grow and fill the void left by the PLO's defeat. Right. So, yeah. Any questions so far? I mean, this sounds like Black Panthers to me. Like, uh -huh. Sounds like the power. IRA. Power Sounds like that. yep. Very similar. No. This is why we need to um, three, folks. It's and this is just part one. Imagine what part two and three have to offer. So, oh, this you know, be, but he's this is the part one. Oh, he's wow. doing part two and three supposedly. Oh, so we we'll keep an eye out for him. We got to get him on. Like, again, I'm just really <laughs> like, what caused him to think, like, hmm, something doesn't feel right. Let me research this a little more and see if I can. Yeah, he probably knew a bit of it and saw people making the mistake and went, well, let me, let, let me, let me teach them. You know, they're going to learn today. Um, but anyway, we'll let him finish this out. Um, 80s to formulate an argument that suggests Israel created Hamas, delegitimizes the group's role in the national liberation struggle, and robs Palestinians of their autonomy under such a narrative. While many Palestinians, especially in Gaza, have historically been opposed to Hamas as a political force, they overwhelmingly support the armed wing of the group and its role in fighting their occupiers. Despite the fact that the Israelis, who were attempting to build localized Palestinian administrative bodies to ease the administrative burden of the occupying authorities and undermine the PLO, had actively encouraged groups like the Mujama to help achieve this goal, it is very clear that as soon as weapons became involved, their attitudes changed. This had more to do with the fact that Israel did not anticipate the kind of impact that their war in Lebanon would have, or that Islamic resistance groups like Lebanese Hezbollah and Hamas would emerge to fill the gap left by a defeated PLO and leftist groups. Exemplifying this, here's Israel's Benjamin Netanyahu in 1982. If you take away the Soviet Benjamin Union and its Netanyahu? chief proxy, the PLO, international terrorism would collapse. Simply switch the words Soviet Union for Iran and PLO for Hamas, and you'll find that the Israeli argument against Palestinian resistance has not changed at all. Saying this, if the argument was that because of Israel, Hamas exists, then this would be accurate. But 
it would also be accurate for every single group resisting Israel. But what about the Oslo Accords, the suicide bombings, Palestinian civil war, and Israel's influence on all of that? Or what about the Qatari aid money being transferred into Gaza in suitcases? Well, stay tuned for part two and three as we look deeper into the history of whether Israel really helped to create and prop up Hamas. Robert, we well, want you on the show. Come on. Yeah, dude. Feel free to come on. We'll talk to you about we it. We love your work. So, come on. Yeah. Listen to the man. Listen to them. Well, anything to say? You know. I am intrigued, and I am looking forward to the rest of it. Um, but... You know, um, actually, I'll meet. I just read in Gold Monarch's um, comment in the yeah. chat. They said, if Israel truly created Hamas, it would explain how many pro crypto establishment articles painted Hamas as having digital wallets, which, okay, has to first come from the IDF. So. Yeah. And, uh, you know, with crypto, there's a ton of gray area with all that too you know like they they could have been equally exploited through it not knowing you know um but yeah i mean it's just that history is good to learn you know otherwise we are doomed to repeat it and even though we know it we a lot of times are still doomed to repeat it well i think i think this is an example of why independent when independent media is good this yeah. is why it's valid because you're not going to hear this like most people are not going to hear this and it's almost sad to say like not even people in the independent media space is going to report on this much less talk about it in this way no so it just i got time me, though yeah it just makes me appreciate so. more for journalists like robert who i think you know and we reference him a lot and we really enjoy his work but He's definitely showing, like, he has a curiosity to kind of go deeper and just kind of see, like, is this the talking point that you might hear in mainstream? Is this really true? And, like, you know, really willing to kind of dig deeper into, like, a lot of these topics to really uncover more of what is not necessarily being said, even within our space. So... Again, yeah. I really appreciate him, you know, going this route um, and challenging me in terms of what I've even said online and even you, like, yep. regarding Hamas, you know. But I do think it's interesting, like, essentially, the idea of Hamas is kind of based out the idea of, you know, like, not oppression, um, but liberation, like wanting better for your people and wanting your people to be educated and, as I said, fed and, you know, wanting them essentially to be human. So so I like, not to say I like in comparison, but like it, it, I appreciate this more in terms of, and that makes yep. more sense to me versus having like BB just kind of be like in the center of it, which he is, but not in the way that I think even I or you believed initially. So yeah. uh, so I really appreciate Robert really and doing that. Go and- go show him some appreciation. Go go click that article down there. I know I know Mint Press and Consortium I do believe are always requiring some resources. So go help them out. Right. You know, but um, yeah, I, you know, I found it interesting for sure reading through it. And I don't know the history of the region enough a lot of times to say stuff. So right, helpful to, to get some more information. Right. It's, um, it, I think this segment was good as we call these set kind of segments like evergreen in terms of. Yeah. Like, these are the segments that we love doing in terms of, like they will stand the test of time. So like you can watch this five, 10, 15 years from now and 
I'm sure it still apply. It will still apply. So yeah, um, hopefully. Yeah. So well, I would argue in terms of if Palestine is ever liberated and they manage to rebuild and kind of retell the tell the history in their own terms, I'm sure work like Robert and and his journalistic expertise would kind of lead into this in terms of how they fought in terms of gaining the liberation that they were seeking. So so the way he's kind of building into that in terms of if Palestine is ever restored, that this can be the basis of that education there. And hopefully throughout the world, in, in terms of really understanding really the true nature of Hamas. And it's not like this terrorist entity that our leaders are making them out to be. Even the ones who might say, I think kind of more in the liberal terms of, oh, you know, like, you know, they're terrorists, but they may not necessarily be that bad type of thing, you know, but, um, but yeah, really good. Way to go, Robert. Yep. Like I said, we want, we would love to have you on talk more about this. So if anyone has his contact, uh, you know, tag him, we would love to have him on, uh, yep. talk about this more. Um, but I mean, talking about these things, is why we're demonetized so you can scan that qr code on your screen go to that url code-v.com slash indie news network you know or links are always in the description below if you don't want to do those things we make it easy for you but you know if you can't give monetarily we appreciate just you know sharing sharing with your friends leaving comments liking and if you haven't subscribed yet hit that little red button down there Make that number go up. We're trying to get to 3K. But, you know, otherwise, thanks for watching.